Joining us for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Pablo Argelis, Assistant Professor at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Chair of OBGYN at the University of Maryland's Baltimore Washington Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. We are coming up on something called Women's Checkup Day. Why is it a good idea for women to get a checkup? Uh, well, I think for women and men, it's really important to get an annual health checkup. But women, sometimes they, they run the household, they have a job, sometimes they need to really take time out for themselves. It's interesting that men have this reputation of never wanting to go to the doctor unless we're bleeding or, or something. And women live longer, right? So maybe there's a connection there. Uh, there might be. Um, it turns out, though, the, the gap between men and women is narrowing a little bit in terms of how much uh, or how long we live. And some of the theories there are that women may not be taking as good a care of themselves if they, as they used to in terms of risk of heart disease, um, alcohol, and drug use as well. So women, unfortunately, are catching up a little bit. Do, do recommendations for, for preventative care, the need for preventative care, change depending on somebody's age? Uh, Jeff, that is a great question. Uh, we see patients um, as early as 13 to 15 years, sometimes a little earlier if they're referred by the uh, pediatrician for menstrual irregularities. And then we deal with the reproductive years. And then we deal with a uh, large part of my volume is menopause and perimenopause. And then really, you know, 65 and above, these women really need um, good access to health care and their needs change. So we have a real continuum of patients from right from the beginning of their menstrual cycle well through menopause. Let's talk about the let's talk about the non-female parts first. The, the the things that really everybody should be thinking about in terms of blood pressure and cholesterol and, and diabetes screenings. Sure. Um, I like to keep it simple. Um, a lot of the times I may be a patient's only healthcare provider, so I'll constantly refer to what the most current guidelines are on a lot of these screening tests. But a lot of what I deal with really is helping patients take care of themselves. Um, so whether they're male or female, well actually for us it's female, it's really about prioritizing their time and what checkups make sense. That's interesting. So you are, for many people, the annual The checkup. annual exam, absolutely. And, and so, so frequently you're, you're um, taking care of somebody in the absence of an internal medicine provider or primary care. Uh, they, they see you hopefully once a year and that's it. Yeah, and so for a lot of basic complaints, we can manage them fairly easily, but um, there are times where we absolutely refer or say, you know what, I think you really do need a primary care doc, and then that personal recommendation can really help that patient uh, establish a connection with another primary care provider in the area. So what's happening in, in terms of the recommendations for, for routine screenings for female-specific things, the, the mammogram and the pap smear? Uh, great question. So um, with the advent of HPV testing that has really come into its um, into its own human papilloma virus. virus. Yeah. Since about 2012, our guidelines have really changed. And uh, a lot of my patients are a little concerned about not necessarily having a pap smear every year uh, because those guidelines have really changed. And the main reason for that is really trying to prevent the risks of overtreatment as well, which is sometimes we don't necessarily do a good job of talking about in terms of screening can sometimes lead to overtreatment. So, you, you were telling me before uh, the, the program that you've been reading recently about incredible health disparities geographically in, in the United States. There's been this analysis done by, by county. Right. Um, so trying to do a little cribbing or prepping uh, for today, came across an article that literally just came out today from JAMA, and it was talking about health disparity and life expectancy. And they took death registry data by county. And then they made a map of it. And you can find it online. And some of the healthiest um, counties in our United States might live up to 20 years more than some of our least healthy counties in the US. 20 years is a staggering number. It's really pretty sobering that so, there can be that much of a difference. So let me ask it this way. What would you recommend for, for those uh, underachieving counties? What are they doing wrong? What, what should they start doing today? Um, 
So whether you're male or female, it really comes down to the, our number one killer is cardiovascular health. So moving, uh, reducing your risk of obesity, reducing your risk of diabetes. If you're smoking, you just got to stop it. And um, alcohol in moderation. These are really basic things, just like our mom told us. There you go. Let's uh, grab a quick phone call. Prince George's County. This is Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I have a number of concerns. I'm a nurse practitioner, and under the current uh, health care that uh, that the House uh, passed, there's a lot of optional uh, health care needs that can be uh, cut off by the state. And uh, I'm very concerned that without, that unless the state really raises taxes... Bonnie, we're going to gonna leave it right there because I think that might be off topic a little bit. But let's sum up in half a minute what you want to, the message you want to leave for women in particular about basic preventative care. Sure. I think the most important thing is taking time out for yourself and getting that annual checkup because we're more than just the pap smear and the mammogram. Dr. Pablo Argelis of the Baltimore Washington Medical Center. Doctor, thank you very much. Thank you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.